Hey folks, Robbie Payne here again with Chrome Unboxed. And today we are going to take a look at three different Chromebooks abilities to cast tabs to the Chromecast. The reason I'm going to do this is A, because I've gotten quite a few requests between the three and um, also because I'm a little bit curious myself. Um, as we all know, the ability for the Chromecast to actually cast a tab um, relies heavily on the processing power of the device casting that tab. So whether it's coming from a MacBook or a Windows uh, PC or a Chromebook, uh, the processor is tasked with actually uh, manipulating that data and sending it to the Chromecast. Now with things like YouTube, Hulu, Netflix, those types of things, once you've started that, um, started that video and then cast that video from that particular uh, web application, uh, the Chromecast takes over and nothing is relying on the device itself. But with casting a tab, the, that's a very different thing. And so uh, it's actually going to give us a good idea of the uh, just the raw processing power between the three of these guys. So I wanted to show you all three of these in this shot so that when we switch to the television, you can just trust me that I'm telling you the truth that I'm actually using three different devices to cast up uh, the same video. And we'll see how all three of these guys fare in the video. All right, so we have our Chromecast here, and I'm just gonna kind of do these in order. Um, the best performer I've found so far when casting anything uh, is the HP Chromebook 14. I think that's due to the Haswell processor paired with the four gigs of RAM. So like I said, this is a relatively intense operation uh, for a Chromebook, for any computer for that matter. Um, I actually had an Asus, um, I can't remember the, the Q200E. It was an I, last year's i3 processor paired with four gigs of RAM. And that device uh, could not um, actually handle any kind of full motion video. You could do uh, 480p standard definition and it, it did an okay job, um, but it still wasn't even watchable. The, the frames jumped around so much. So what we're gonna see, um, Chromebook 14, this is uh, The Verge. I'm just kind of using that as a, um, a template for all these. Uh, we got some video, uh, we have some pretty pretty hefty stuff. So quick scroll here, and you see a little bit of artifacting there as it's kind of having to process the page, but it quickly resolves. And so browsing is definitely not a problem. So if you're showing um, a presentation or something like that with one of these, uh, I mean, people that are into PowerPoint really want to have dual monitors and stuff. This is probably not going to be for you. Uh, but if you had something where you could set up um, uh, Google Slides or there's a couple other different web applications for uh, PowerPoint presentations, that, you know, those things would be just fine um, as long as you were able to uh, kind of manipulate the television when you turn it on and off and maybe create a blank slide to start that with. So um, we will start embedded video here real quick. Because if you were to do this, say, on YouTube, for instance, as soon as I click play, has captured the imagination of our generation. as soon as I click play, uh, it's actually going to kick over and begin um, um, streaming via the Chromecast. So the Chromecast would take over um, the stuff there. And so definitely not something we want to, uh, we're trying to do here. I'm trying to cast the tab completely. So... So once it got loaded, um, video's nice and smooth. That, that slight pan that's going on right there, we're not seeing any jitters. Pretty good, uh, pretty good here. I do want to check my settings real quick. Yeah, that's actually pushing at 720p. Um, that's pretty impressive. Um, let me drop it down to 480, uh, which is a whole lot less intensive on the processor. Uh, and I don't know if you can tell in the video. Um, I'm gonna refresh this page real quick. And yeah, I mean, it's a noticeable like small text over there on the right um, in, this, in that gray area over here where that's being highlighted. 
Uh, it's pretty tough to read at 480p. Um, so take it with a grain of salt. We'll click this video again. Definitely plenty smooth at 480p. And at that size and a small window, it's no big deal. Uh, but once we expand this guy out, uh, let it kind of catch up there. Um, you see it's, it's pretty grainy. So I, I don't see a whole lot of trade off here as far as performance. It's not like the 720 was, was hurting. Um, so one last thing, let me flip this back over to 720. Now there's 720 and then 720 high bit rate. You get into the high bit rate, yes, you do run into some issues. Um, anytime you stream high bit rate stuff over any network, you're gonna run into some issues. So this is back to the 720p. Let's go full screen with this. And you see, uh, video looks actually really good. Um, all these these painting shots and tech videos are great for really really checking out frame rates because when things are moving really quickly, it's hard to tell frame rates are dropping. But when things are painting nice and smooth, uh, it's pretty easy to tell um, whether or not you're jumping. And as you see that kind of pan real slow, it's real nice and smooth. So pretty well done there. Um, and we're going to come back through the other test I'm going to do is actually with a local file. Um, for those of you who don't know, you can simply from your um, from your file browser, you can actually drag uh, a video file right into um, right into uh, a browser window and it'll just play. Uh, Chrome can actually convert and play quite a few different video types. So if you don't know if it, whether it does or not, the best thing to do is just drag that file into a, an empty Chrome window and see if it'll start playing. Uh, it'll play music files and all kinds of things. So um, those things are worth are worth casting as well. We'll do that kind of in round two. Um, so we're gonna take the HP off, stop casting, give him a break. And then my next one, I'm basically kind of moving down the line here. So the next one is the Acer C720. Uh, if you haven't watched my full review, uh, check it out. I have a full review of the HP 14 and a full review of the Acer C720. I've got I've got head to heads between the two of them. Um, I've got a review of the C720 and the C720P. Um, so just uh, subscribe to the channel. Check out all the videos. Um, you can see kind of what my thoughts are on each one. The C720P. For those of you who haven't watched those yet, uh, it, it's it's I don't want to say downfall, but the uh, the step down from the HP 14 is it the Acer C720P that I have in my possession. And from what I understand, I, I don't know that there's a four gig one out yet. It only has two gigs of RAM. And that doesn't sound like a huge deal, but it can be a big deal when it comes to heavier processing needs. And as you'll see in the review, if you take a look at that, um, you'll actually see some of the problems that it has when you get into opening multiple tabs and multiple things going on that are really kind of stealing away some of that memory. And so we are gonna cast this guy. I'm gonna make sure there and this one's also a 720p and so uh, after jumping to 480p on the HP I don't even see a point in doing it if one of these struggles we may drop it to 480 and just to check to see what it does so let's check scrolling smooth big scroll so yeah a little artifacting but it catches up pretty quick so very similar to the HP uh, which is not shocking same processor so let's start this video Looking good. Um, let's go ahead and blow it up full screen. It takes a second. Anytime you make pretty big changes, like blowing something up full screen or something like that, you're, you're going to get some jitters at the beginning.
Because keep in mind, we are actually we're streaming and pushing this at the same time. So it's really pushing the processor quite a bit. So we'll, we'll kind of chill out and watch some of these frame rates. Uh, frame rates look a bit lower. I mean, we're just a little bit. And this is the second one in a row now I've had issues that where the voices aren't lining up. The first time I stream, I cast it with the HP, it worked. But every other time I took it off and went back with the HP, it was doing the same thing. of A slight alteration in the, uh, the, the sound on the screen matching. Uh, but overall, the video quality looks pretty good. I mean, I'm not really, I'm not complaining about anything. Because as I said, you've got to consider we're streaming video here. So the processor is dealing with uh, streamed video and dealing with getting it going. And then turning around and having to reprocess that and push it to the Chromecast. So we're really talking about some serious stuff going on. Uh, so kudos to the Haswell processor. Pretty good. Pretty well done there. Um, so we'll give the, go and give the Acer a rest. And last but not least, this may not be a shock at all. Um, I want everyone to keep in mind, again, if you haven't watched reviews, if you haven't checked out what's going on, uh, basically the, um, the internals of the Samsung Chromebook that is still, I think, the number one selling Chromebook uh, online right now, um, and the HP 11, the internals are the exact same. Now, the HP 11 really stepped up the bar and build quality on the outside, but literally changed nothing about the inside. So what you're looking at is the 5250 Exynos processor by Samsung as a dual core chipset. Uh, I want to say A or A22 Cortex. I think I, I'm unsure. I don't have that data right in front of me. Um, but it, it was a fast chipset, same thing that's in the Nexus 10 um, as well. And so that paired with two gigs of RAM, 16 gig solid state internal drive, same exact stuff on the HP 11. So even though you may not be looking at the Samsung Chromebook right now, you might be looking at the HP 11. So the, the performance you see in this particular test will, will be the exact same, literally uh, the exact same as what you would see on the uh, Chromebook 11 from HP. So we'll do the same thing. I'm going to cast this tab, same page, and unfortunately I'm going to cast the same video. So you're going to get to hear that guy talk about the same stuff again, and I apologize for that. And you can tell it's even taking it a little bit longer to kind of get, uh, get the cast going. If it's going to go at all. So we'll do a small scroll. And big scroll. Uh, definitely can tell the bit uh, the, the frame rates are not near what they are with the Haswell processor. Uh, shouldn't be surprising to anybody who's used uh, the ARM Chromebook. And let me check to make sure we're pushing 720p. Um, the extension will give you uh, a warning. Okay, this is pushing the 480p, so I'm gonna go ahead and let it let it do its thing here um, at 480p first, and then we'll kick it up to 720 in a second. And you see right now, even at 480p, it's struggling. Um, and again, as I said before, you're asking a lot of a processor to do this. Um, and that this is kind of what I expected. Yeah, it's going to drop out. Uh, and I'm getting the warning now on my Max Chromecast okay. fuel economy. Um, that I don't need to be doing this, <laughs> basically. And so um, you'll see that a lot. Now, technically, ca tab casting is in beta. And they're also working on being able to cast your desktop uh, as well. And so I'm sure all these things are going to come down the line. If you haven't used it yet, there's a, a device or a, a, an app for Android called Avia, A-V-I-A, uh, allows you to, uh, and I think Plex will do the same thing. Uh, Plex has a monthly fee, like three bucks or something. 
but both of those apps will allow you to have local content on your device and stream them to uh, straight to the Chromecast. And I got to say, as long as it's not a super high bitrate file, I've watched some full length movies using uh, Avia or Avia or however you pronounce it from my Nexus 7 and it has been phenomenal. So the Chromecast definitely has the ability to accept local content and stream it at, at, at really high quality. So it really is a matter of whether the device itself has the processing uh, power to do it. And honestly, the Nexus 7, uh, you know, has good internals, but you know, it's an S4 Pro, which is kind of like the, the uh, Snapdragon 600, um, which is no slouch by any, by any stretch of the imagination, but it's not the most powerful processor in the world. And it, it just uh, knocks it out whenever you stream video over that device. Um, all right, we're going to take a quick break. Uh, I'm going to come right back and we're actually going to use the uh, devices to, to cast a local file from the Chromebook. So it's going to take a little load off the processors on each one. We'll see what kind of quality we can get out of those. Okay, guys, I'm back. I had to download a, a file to show you. I do want to show you really quickly how to go about playing back local media. So I'm just going to slide this in front of here so I don't have to move my camera. So you can see I've got a Chrome window up and I've got um, just the file browser. All you have to do is grab the file, drag it into the Chrome window, and drop it. Okay. So I want to show you that. I'm going to pause this real quick, and we're going to cast it up. So this is actually a 720. Oops, excuse me. Uh, this is a 720p video uh, for the new the trailer for the Jack Ryan agent movie. Um, and so this is the Chromebook's ability to play 720p high def ish <laughs> not full high def but high definition over the chromecast playing local uh, localized content so now the the device isn't having to deal with um, uh, actually streaming the videos playing it straight from its drive so we will watch this and see how it goes some of the streaming stuff we were doing looked a little better earlier to be completely honest with you um, and again I'm I'm at a place with a public uh, it's a really good router but I am a couple rooms away from that router so that can that can tend to have a little problem uh, especially when you're doing this stuff too if you're at home you probably want to be near your router when you're doing this kind of stuff if you're going to be casting video in this way so this next one is This one is from the Acer C720P. Uh, oh wait, sorry, that's the that's the website. Excuse me a second. And again, I'm doing the same thing here, just dragging that file into a Chrome browser window and letting it play. Get that cast in. Definitely sound is not lining up at all here, so we're going to stop casting it. And let me cast it first and then start playing back. Okay, now let's try playing back. Yeah, we're getting some pretty uh, poor 
uh, uh, audio alignment. Now talk me through your very scary scenario. Keep in mind I don't have your PhD. Tokyo, London, United States. It's going to be a wipeout. We'll never see it coming. You're not just an analyst anymore. You're operational now. Um, frame rates are okay here. Uh, just out of curiosity, I'm going to try something. Um, I found that usually it seems like uh, streaming stuff is good. So I'm going to go to the exact same site where that came from. So. Credit going to uh, hdtrailers.net for supplying me with this stuff. So I'm actually going to stream it right from them and uh, see if we get a different different result here. Let's see how it goes. Screw that kind of situation. Pretty crummy right now. Let's see if it catches up. assume different files are going to work different ways so um, you know the, uh, there's so many different encryption types and there's different ways to compile data when it comes to video and so there's gonna be certain videos I've watched certain ones where I've cast them and it's just been perfect I've watched ones where I couldn't get the audio to line up or the video jumped around I don't think that's a change in the Chromebook itself but Chrome's ability to deal with video I'm sure you could probably go look on Chrome uh, and some about pages and figure out because this is actually turning out now that it's kind of caught up, looks good. Frame rates are good. Audio's lined up. And so it's actually doing a better job streaming and casting than it was doing with the local file. So uh, whatever the file was and the type of file that I downloaded from this, um, apparently Chrome didn't like it quite as much as it likes probably this embedded Flash player or something similar to. So uh, keep those things in mind. I mean, it's, it's worth trying uh, multiple avenues uh, before giving up on casting a tab. Last but not least, we're going to go with the ARM Chromebook. Um, and every time I pick up this little Samsung, um, I do enjoy the way uh, Samsung went about making it. It's very unique. I'm looking very forward um, to the oft-rumored uh, follow-up to this device. Um, for those of you who have not heard, supposedly uh, it's going to have the octa-core big little processor in it, 3 gigs of RAM, and then Basically, the 13, 6, or, I'm sorry, uh, 1280 by 720 display, just double those pixels. So, uh, what is that? Fifth, or 2560 by 1440 display. So, we're talking a nice, nice high definition display. They're talking in the realm of 12 inches, 12 to 13 inch display, and that octa core and three gigs of RAM. So, um, I would love to see an ARM core. I, I root for ARM. I really, I, I love mobile processors. Um, uh, it's just been really frustrating between this and the HP 11. Um, so I would love to see an ARM core just come in and just knock it out of the park, do everything really well, have an awesome display, no fans, crazy battery life. Uh, I'm really rooting for that device. Uh, we'll see. We'll see if that pans out. So let's do, um, we'll try both of them on this guy as well real quick. Um, And we're going to the exact same site again. Um, we'll do the same, the same video as well. So we're keeping things at least a little scientific here. And just for reference, I am I am streaming these at 720p. Don't have real high hopes for how this is going to go. And keep in mind, we're only doing this at 480 on the Samsung, which again, it's watchable. It's not like it's terrible. You got to think of it, 
a regular old DVD, um, and it's not even going to let me, it doesn't look like it's going to let me cast it. Try one more time, see if I can get it to go. There we go. Let's just see what happens. Me back off again. So, yeah. I suppose the moral of the story is if you're wanting to have the ability to cast tabs via Chromecast, the ARM processing Chromebooks probably aren't for you. Um, I've not had any luck getting it to happen at all, pretty much, with, uh, with that. Because um, when I first got the Chromecast, I had not got my hands on a Haswell class uh, Chromebook yet. And so, uh, there was no luck with that. I didn't actually have high hopes for the Haswell ones either. Um, they have really surprised me as, with their ability to, to stream video. They do a pretty good job. And as the Chrome, the Chromecast library of applications expands and expands and expands, the need for this is going to be less and less and less um, other than doing some sort of presentation. But for right now, it kind of can fill the gap for you. As I said, uh, an Android device, a tablet um, with that Avia app, um, really fits the bill if, if just streaming some movies and throwing some movies up on your television is kind of what you're wanting to get uh, get done. But the Chromebooks, the Haswell-based Chromebooks can do that, as we've seen. Um, you're probably just going to have issues here and there again. Um, so hopefully this has helped some of you all make a decision um, on, on what Chromebook you're going to get or hold out for. Um, hopefully it's been informative. And uh, again, if you like videos, videos like this, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, give me a thumbs up down there. And also check out chromeunboxed.com, uh, a website that uh, covers basically everything Chrome related. So uh, whether that be news or new hardware or anything that has to do with Chrome and Chrome OS in general, uh, we cover there. So hope to see you there. Hope to see you back for the next video. Have a good one. Thanks.